Hi there, today we're going to make this glass. Uh, we're not going to recreate the entire scene, but I'm going to show you how you can recreate this glass here. And um, basically how you can make the liquids inside of it. I'm going to show you each of the water, the apple juice and the orange juice. And uh, yeah, with that, we can hop right into it and uh, close this image. Start uh, and start making the glass. Uh, I see people do the same mistake over and over again. By the way, let's delete those two. Um, I see people make the same mistakes over and over again. And uh, that is messing up the normals, not having loops where they should have them. And um, yeah. By the way, I added in a cylinder. I'm going to enable my screencast keys. So you can see what I'm doing in the lower right corner, right here. So now if I close this, you're going to see I'm pressing left mouse button, middle mouse button, middle mouse button twice, three times, four times, and so on. So we're going to tab it to edit mode, then press S, Shift Z, and bring the proportions to something that we would want our glass to be. Um, that looks fine, I guess. Now we need to delete the top face by going into the edit mode again. To selecting this face selection mode, pressing X on the face, and um, yep, now it's gone. So what we need to do now is give this glass some thickness. I'm going to do that by pressing A to select everything, Alt E, and bring this in. I'm going to make fairly thin glass, raise the bottom a bit, because if you look at the glass, it's usually a uh, thicker at the bottom than on the walls that is because if you put your glass down too hard it would shatter if the thickness of the bottom was just the same as on the walls so it's there to protect you from yourself i guess um now select this inside phase and the outside phase press ctrl b and i'm going to give this a bevel you can make this like uh round like so. I'm going to make this uh, like phased here. Should look the same on the inside. Yes, it does. Now I'm going to select those here and bevel them with one segment more. So you need to have one segment in the middle that will be important when we add our subdivision surface modifier. So just a knife, knife, nice small bevel, should do. W, shade smooth, and we have a glass. Now what you're going to notice is that if we go here into face orientation, it's going to be all red. And um, I've done this like 200 times over now for this, tutor for this tutorial. Yep, I can't speak today. Um, and it's always red. So what we need to do is press A and shift n that basically turns out or uh like inverts the normals so they phase outwards phase yeah they face outwards and um yeah we can turn off face orientation and it should be fine what i'm going to do now is add in a loop right here yep and now what we're going to see is that every glass has a lip and it's going to look absolutely unrealistic if your glass does not have a lip. So just make a lip right here by doing exactly what I did, like uh, adding in an edge loop, control E, uh, oh, no, alt E and uh, extrude face along normals and you should get that. Now we need another edge loop right up here. To tighten that up and looks good I guess what I did in my glass you don't have to do it you don't have to do any of these decorations except the lip um, that I'm doing but um, yeah I just gave mine a touch of myself so I made an inset here by selecting them pressing I then I hit E and then Z brought those up and um, yeah, looks kind of neat, so I did it. 
Okay, now what we need to do is get that face. Uh, no, those rings on the inside. Like, right here and right here. Then we need this ring and this ring. And bevel them as well. Give them a nice bevel with just one extra loop. Looks like this. And our glass should be just about done. Let me see. Yep, should be just about done. But this is not really looking like it should. So let me just go ahead and... Nope, I just want this. Control plus. Bring it up. I want this to be a little bit more flat. Obviously, don't you don't want this to intersect with any of these. So... Didn't fix a mistake, I just made it look a little nicer in my opinion. Now let's add an, a new prox proximity loop here. Proximity loops are basically uh, loops that tighten up the normals at the edges, so you can see how these normals get pushed along. It's like up here. Yep, and now if we add a subdivision surface modifier by pressing Ctrl 2, should add a modifier here, you can see it looks absolutely nice really good you have that lip here you could make it more or less noticeable by um just making it smaller or bigger uh really anything is fine i'm going to get this loop here scale it in a little bit like so and bring it up a little bit to make this more round this is by the way uh this lip is, by the way, for your teeth. So when you hit your teeth on the glass, uh, the glass doesn't shatter in your mouth. <laughs> so, again, you're just being protected from yourself to not cause any damage to your mouth. So, anyways, enough facts about glass. Let's just... Um, let's just do some shading. Get this... Press uh, G, Z, and then by holding control, you can snap it to the grid, and it should look like this. Uh, I put my cursor over here, so I'm going to press Shift S, cursor to world, world origin, and um, yeah, create a plane. Press Shift A, scale it up, bring this a little bit down because glass looks awful if it's not clipping through the ground at least a little bit so this is already fine but it needs to clip just a bit okay now we can go into shading mode um into the shading workspace select cycles and um now we're going to give this a material new base color i'm going to make mine black roughness 2.4 and glass now with the glass Press new, uh, transmission, that is what makes it glass, so put that to 1, you can already see it looks like glass. Roughness, many people would put it at 0, but um, I found that you have a little bit of an issue with zero roughness, because it lets less light affect the material than if you had at least some roughness. So I'm going to do mine at 0.01. That just gives a little bit more realism because it's not really zero roughness in real life too, even though it is really smooth. This is really smooth either, so... Um, now we need an HDRI. You can download one from hdrihaven.com. So you go to this world setting, color, where it says color, press on the dot, and environment texture, open. Uh, HDRI, that is what I called my folder with many HDRIs inside them. Um, and I'm just going to use this one because I know it works. For this scene, press... I click on your camera, press Alt-G and Alt-R to reset the location and the rotation to zero. R, X, 90. And G, Y, bring it out like this. Bring it up like this. 
and that should be good. Now go into rendered mode to see what it actually looks like. Control B lets us make a border to see only what we need to see so you can create it yourself. Uh, click on the glass, you can see it's really dark. I'm going to set my world illumination to a strength of 3. And um, even though it makes the la glass appear brighter, uh, it is really not as bright as it should be. So go into the base color and you're going to see that value is at 0.9. Uh, 0.906 to be exact. I don't know why they did that, but anyways. Let's set that to 1. Because then it lets all the light go through it. Of course, we get that shadow, but that is normal for glass. Uh, but it actually doesn't absorb any light, so it's better to have it as one. It's physically more accurate. Um, you can see that lip over here. You wouldn't really notice it unless you really looked at it, but it's going to look um, weird if you don't have it. So yeah. As for the glass itself, down here uh, you would actually notice a little bit of a tint. Uh, if you look at glass, uh, hold it against light or just look at it from any perspective you're going to see at the thickest part it's going to have some discoloration and it's usually green so we're going to add in the volume not a principled volume not the volume scatter but volume absorption that is what is going to give us that um, discoloration at the thickest part that is because um, glass just as liquids are usually white uh, but they have some impurities which uh, cause it to have a certain color. Um, so yeah, go to color, make this some turquoise, turquoise, however you want to call it, um, color. And you should already see it being a little bit discolored. And that is good, you can make it more noticeable by increasing the density to like 100 and you would have a fully stained glass that is really realistic. More realistic than um, changing the base color because it actually um, gets affected by the thickness of the glass itself. So you can make uh, some really discolored glass, some, some green glass or whatever. Um, you can make only the bottom have that really green tint by lowering the density that is why I, th why I also said to make the bottom a bit higher because it's then thicker and um, thickness gives it gives this uh, that discoloration which it needs um, to be realistic I'm going to set mine to 0 0.75 that should be more than sufficient looking good not too obvious um, anyways let's go in and um, create our liquid in the glass so you could either start modeling everything from scratch again, which would be a pain in the ass to line up, or you could just steal from this. So, face selection mode, select this top face or bottom face of the glass, however you see it. Press Ctrl and plus, or wait, before you do that, let's actually add in a loop. And this loop really defines to what point your liquid is going to be in your glass so if you want it to be really full put it to here I'm going to put mine somewhere over here now selected face control plus a bunch of times until we get to that line and duplicate it now press right click to snap it back to where it was press P selection exit edit mode and select only that now give this a face at the top and you will see that again this is in the wrong direction. Press A, Shift N, and uh, really that step caused me to <laughs> re-record this two times because um, I forgot to do it and it always looked weird and yeah. Um, accidentally scaled it, but um, yeah, you should scale it. I'm going to turn off face orientation. So in order for glass to work or liquid in the glass to work, uh, it has to intersect with the with the glass itself and uh, that means that the glass needs to be or, or the, the water or whatever liquid needs to be inside of the glass not 
like pouring into it but really inside of the walls of the glass so how are you going to do this press s and then one that is scaling it by effectively one so doesn't scale it point and i'm going to go with o o one so it's just barely scaled inside the walls uh, and that is going to allow us to get that realistic glass or realistic um, water inside the glass. My brain is really working slow today. Um, as you can see, looks weird uh, because of the volume absorption. And also, we don't have uh, subdivision surface enabled, which we will leave turned off. So I'm going to make the separate. So I'm going to make this a separate material, like this. And uh, now I'm going to delete this volume absorption. So you're going to see that it clears out. Uh, but now we're getting this really black outline, which you would also have if you weren't um, subdividing this, I guess. Um, with proximity loops and everything. So how do we take care of that? Well, easy. We're going to select our liquids. Enable subdivision surface that allows it to look like this, <laughs> uh, which is not really what we need. So add an, an edge loop like so, bring it right to the top. You can see it still looks weird. Inset this once, like so, and should really have like a thin dip here. And now what we what you will see glass do it's uh a part of surface tension it will have like a slight dip over here so just bring it down like so and another inset and if you were to enable this it looks like this it's maybe a little bit extreme so let's bring it up just a tad like so it's really micro scales here but uh it all leads to a better end result. Let's go in here and see what it looks like. With the subdivisions and uh, the proximity loops, it looks absolutely amazing. Looks like real water inside the glass. Almost. Because what you will notice, it looks like it's just glass inside a glass. And uh, that is not good. So what we need to do is change the IOR, which stands for Index of Refraction. And the Index of Refraction of glass is 1.45 uh, um, to 1.5, depending on the type of glass. But for water, it's like 1.33, which makes it look just the tiniest bit different. But uh, it's the little things that make the difference. And now we have um, water, which is great. We have uh, something that looks good. Now for the juice. What you would expect me to do is just go into the base color and say, yeah, you want orange juice? Make it yellow or orange, but uh, you would get something that doesn't look like orange juice. And um, as for the apple juice I made, you would say, yeah, just make it like this brownish color and uh, apple juice maybe lower the saturation a bit more of red tint and yeah apple juice but no we're not going to do that we're going to take the physical accurate physically accurate route go in volume volume absorption add it back in just deleted it i know i'm sorry um add it in again and make it apple juice color so, approximately this. Just play with the density. Well, I think about... Well, it really depends on the apple juice, I guess. Some are darker, some are lighter. But the uh, thing is, this should really do the trick. So yeah, this is how you would get any sort of uh, juice if you had like... Uh, green energy drink or really yellow energy drink you would uh, color it like this and uh, you would get that color uh, you don't want to use the base color 
for anything glass related um, because it uniformly colors in the glass which is not uh, what we want we always want it to be controlled by the thickness of the glass and um, we don't get that with the base color like you see down here it's becoming blue um, but up here it's also becoming blue but so little that you can't notice it um, and that is what we want but uh, yeah for the apple juice just use an apple juice color play with the density and you'll get what you want but uh, that doesn't get us orange juice and orange juice is something I have struggled with uh, for a long time because it has subsurface scattering it has um, it has like this yellowish orangish color and it's really hard to get um, and for a long time I didn't know how to make it until I found myself in front of the screen thinking how can I make orange juice and uh, <laughs> Surprisingly, it's just a normal glass shader with the principled volume and you plug it in and plug the volume into the volume and uh, yeah, you can play with the density to like set it to like 100. It becomes really dark, um, which is not the point of this, but if I gave this some color, you would see it's still not becoming orange or anything. Even if I turn the volume up, um, not the volume, the, the value up, still not becoming orange. And that is because uh, for volumes, they don't actually take any indirect light bounces, which basically means that you cannot get lighting inside the volume. Um, if you have like a glass or refractive material inside, because uh, all of the lighting that comes in just gets puked out on the other side, which doesn't really help. So what we need to do is go into this tab here, light paths, and you have this volume here where it says zero, you can set it to one, and it will have like one bounce. I'm going to suggest to put it on something higher, like 12, maybe a bit lower, you might not need 12, but uh, 12 is uh, what's working for me. And um, this is going to become really noisy really quickly, so I suggest you... Uh, make your render part here a lot smaller now I'm going to uh, go to value uh, not value to uh, hue and set it to point let's go with one two five that is I think what I used for my render let's make this a little bit wider yep uh, I think that is what I used for my render. I want um, something lower, like here. And um, now the point is to make it thin enough so you can see the inside of the glass, but thick enough so it still looks like orange juice. So let's go with 40. And I think I might just speed this up so you don't have to wait this long. Finally, so this is it for the tutorial. Um, this is what your final result should look like. Um, hopefully you can impress your friends with realistic glass without messed up normals, good topology, um, proximity loops where you need them, uh, this little lip and the minor details, uh, like uh, being able to actually see a, a, a lip here, um, the the fluid being refracted in the glass so it's uh, right on the outside wall you being able to see the inside or the bottom of uh, the glass through your orange juice and of course the blue tint and the orange juice itself who doesn't like orange juice anyways here's uh, the setup I used uh, principled volume color really desaturated yellow um, 
and the density of 18, which may vary. Uh, maybe you don't want such thick orange juice. I want it thick, but uh, you can make it uh, really more transparent. But anyways, that's it from me. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to make the best glass without any issues. And of course, some orange juice along the way. Uh, and we will see each other in the next one. I would greatly appreciate it if you would actually subscribe, comment what you want to see next. Uh, maybe like the video, you don't have to. But um, yeah, if you stuck to the end, just say hi. And uh, I will say hi as well. Thank you. And we will see each other in the next one. Bye.